Students, you have learned how to find out zero of a linear polynomial. Today we are going to learn how to find out zeros of a quadratic polynomial. You know, a linear polynomial can have at the most one zero. A quadratic polynomial can have at the most two zeros because the degree of a quadratic polynomial is two. A cubic polynomial can have three zeros because the degree of a cubic polynomial is three. Or in general, we can say a polynomial of degree n can have n zeros. Now let us see how to find out the zeros of a quadratic polynomial. Let us take a simple case in which the first polynomial t square minus 3. t square minus 3, we know is a quadratic polynomial according to our method. It is to be factored into two linear polynomials. You know this can be written as t square minus root 3 square. Now it is in the form a square minus b square which is factored as a plus b into a minus b. So t square minus root 3 square is factored as t plus root 3 multiplied by t minus root 3. Thus the quadratic polynomial is factored into two linear polynomials. After getting linear polynomials, we equate each linear polynomial to 0. So t plus root 3 is equal to 0 implies that t is equal to minus root 3. Similarly, second linear polynomial t minus root 3 is equated to 0 becomes t is equal to root 3. Thus, we get two zeros of the quadratic polynomial as minus root 3 and root 3. Let us take another case. 5x square minus 15x. Here also you can see there are two terms in it and uh, so it can be factored by taking a highest common factor from each of the terms. The highest common factor is 5x. 5x into x minus 3. If you have a difficulty, you can also write this as 5 into x into x minus 5 into 3 into x. Then from this you can take common 5x. So that way you can write it. Now we got two linear factors. One is 5x and x minus 3. Equating each linear polynomial to 0. 5x is equal to 0 implies that x is equal to 0 upon 5 which is 0. And second linear polynomial is x minus 3 equated to 0. So we get x is equal to 3. Thus the zeros are 0 and 3. So you can see 0 and 3 are the zeros. Zero also can be zero of a polynomial. Let's see a third case. 3y square minus y minus 4. Here there are three terms and by examining we can see this can be factored by splitting the middle term. Because no, it does not match any identity. Therefore, this identify the sum. Sum is the coefficient of middle term. That is, middle term is y coefficient is minus 1. A sum is minus 1 and product is minus 12. As the product is positive, one of the factor is positive, another is negative. And the sum is negative. When we find out the sum of a positive and a negative number, if the sum is negative, it implies that the bigger factor is negative. So factoring 
minus 12 as minus 12 into 1, minus 6 into 2, minus 4 into 3. You can see in all the three cases the product is minus 12 but only in the last factor the sum is also minus 1 product is minus 12. So we factorize the this term by splitting the middle term as minus 4 and 3. 3y square minus 4y plus 3y minus 4. Then group them into 2 group of 2. From the first we identify the highest common factor as y then 3y minus 4. From the first sec uh, from the second group the sign of the first term that is plus is taken common. There is no other common factor other than 1. So 1 is taken common factor 3y minus 4. So the factors are 3y minus 4 and y plus 1. Once it is factored into two linear polynomials, equate each linear polynomial to 0. 3y minus 4 is equal to 0, 3y is equal to 4, y is equal to 4 upon 3. Taking the second linear factor y plus 1 equal to 0, y is equal to minus 1. So the zeros of this polynomial are 4 by 3 and minus 1.